Hey, uh, I'm Tate, and this is my 1995 E36 M3, which, as you can tell, has had uh, quite a lot of work done to it. Um, so it has the Live to Offend body kit. Um, it's got a turbo. It's got upgraded suspension. It's obviously, it's on bags. Custom wheels, and there's a lot to learn here, and I'm still learning about it myself, actually. Um, only owned the car for a month now and yeah it's really really fun to drive and definitely going to be a fun project over the next year or however long i'm lucky enough to own it so how did you come into possession of this car tate uh actually it's i got extremely lucky um a few people have, have asked me this question and um so there's a website called Cars and Bids, and uh, I had never bought anything from there before, but I subscribed to their newsletter where they send out what cars uh, are ending on the auction that day, as well as what auctions are starting. And I don't normally check that email, but for whatever reason, uh, about two months ago, I did. And when I saw this, I just knew I had to have it. Uh, whatever it took I was gonna buy it and um, so for like the next week I followed the auction and um, got into a little bit of a bidding war but ultimately uh, I I won it and I was able to take it home uh, the car was based out of Salt Lake City and I'm in Seattle so uh, I thought about how am I gonna get the car home and then I just decided to drive it and over the next two days after I won the auction, I did, and made it home with zero issues. So, um, shout out to Mush, the builder, for doing a great job and um, making sure that the car was good to go when I picked it up. And yeah, it was a great drive. That's something I like to do: drive cars. You get to know them. You know, you don't get to know your car on a trailer. So, yeah, that was a great experience. So it's not a garage queen. No, no, definitely not. I take it out every chance that I get. Um, try to take it out to every show and uh, just let people enjoy it. Let people, uh, let people see it. Awesome. Well, let's talk about some of the details. So for those of you that don't know, LTO or Live to Offend um, was a company started by a guy named, I hope I'm saying this right, Kaisel Salim. It could be Kizzle, I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, you can say the Kaiser. That's the what he Kaiser. goes by on Instagram yep. if you want to look him up. So, and we'll be cutting to shots of the kit here. Um, but yeah, what, what are some of the, the details of this kit that you feel really make it special and set it apart from a typical, you know, wide body, just some over fenders? Yeah, I mean, definitely the build quality of the kit um, is really, really, it's, it's obviously well made um, and a lot of work was put not only into the kit, but the installation as well. Um, so you can see here that the kit's been uh, molded into the original body and you really cannot tell. It looks like it came from the factory. Um, and, you know, it just looks great because it's not just, you know, some wider fenders or something like that. I mean, if you, if you look down here, you can tell that, uh, there's actually some aerodynamic considerations, which I'm a big fan of. Um, and yeah, there's just something about it that really stood out to me. And it's like, looks like something from a video game. Every time I see it, I'm just like, I cannot believe that this car even exists and that I own it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's not a single rivet in the car, which is unique for a wide body kit. Yeah. Um, and then the, the functionality of it, like you said, it's it's cool when something looks good and also right. does something, which is really nice. Exactly, I drive this car. I don't want it to just be uh, something that I trailer around, you know? We might have to pause really quick. Okay. We got busted. No, just kidding. The guy was really cool. <laughs> yeah, nice guy. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I think we were just talking about the functionality of the kit. Obviously, it being molded to the body, it's kind of special, so. Yeah, and if you look, I mean, there's a lot of consideration into being able to own the kit and live with it because the bottom panels um, on the front lip and the side skirts 
um, detached. So if something were to happen to it, it's easily replaceable. You don't have to replace the entire front end, uh, which is really nice. Yeah. Cool. Let's uh, let's talk about the wheels. Yeah, definitely. Um, so these wheels, they were built um, for this car, custom made for this car. 315s in the back. Um, definitely makes, you know, that allows for a lot of traction. Um, triple eight R's uh, on the car. And the center cap is something, so they're, you know, it's not a center lock wheel, but it is a center lock cap that gives it a really nice finish, I think. And um, I actually replaced the center lock with um, a part that I designed and 3D printed. So it's um, printed out of a material called um, PETG with a carbon fiber inlay. And what that means is it just means that the, the layers in the 3D print adhere to each other and it's, you know, it's got carbon fiber in it. So every car guy loves that, especially me. And it just gives it a nice, a nice look while still being functional and um, you know, real center locks are, it can be challenging on a street car. Um, if you ever have to take it off on the side of the road or something like that, there's a lot of torque involved there. So um, the center locks that are on now can be removed easily. And um, yeah, it just gives it such a unique look and it really suits the car. I mean, you know, even the livery has colors which match with the wheels, which uh, such a, a great touch from, from the guys that that design delivery and everything. Heck yeah. And then obviously this car is sitting pretty low. You want to tell us how it's doing that? <laughs> yeah, so the car's on bags, um, which is really, really helpful, especially around Seattle. Um, I've yet to scrape the car, maybe a couple little things here and there, but in general, uh, it's it really makes the car super usable. Um, so the bags were done um, by the previous builder and that's an airlift performance kit um, that he installed. They actually sponsored the car for SEMA last year um, and yeah I've had no issues with it. It goes goes up and down within seconds which when you're um, when you've got traffic behind you uh, it's really nice to be able to adjust the ride height um, really quickly so I would highly recommend it and a lot of people ask me how does it affect the handling and you know it really it handles great to me um, I have driven a few other cars before and um, yeah I really would say it doesn't seem to negatively impact the performance at all it still handles great around around the corners so yeah sweet well let's jump into the engine bay yeah for sure and check that out where my wallet starts to cry um, this engine sounds phenomenal um, it really sounds super smooth um, so they did put a new engine in here it's the s52 so it's an m3 motor um, obviously with a turbo on it but the motor itself really hasn't had a lot done to it um, upgraded head gaskets upgraded fuel rails a few other things um, does have a new ECU um, but it's a stock bottom end. So that's gonna be my big project over winter. Uh, so once the weather around here starts to kind of, you know, go downhill, I guess you could say, that's when the long-term projects will start and we're gonna do a full engine build. And right now the car has dynoed at 558 horsepower. Um, but I think when we're done with it, with the, we're gonna reuse the same turbo. Um, we're looking to make about 800 horsepower which is going to be uh, unreal and I'm super excited to see what we can do with this but this is definitely where um, I'll be adding my own touch to the car and uh, yeah definitely I want something that is turnkey and reliable and I can just go out on a weekend without worrying about um, something happening to it so I'll be working with a shop uh, down in Renton Washington called 22 RPD and they they know these cars inside and out so 
really looking forward to working with them on that project. Awesome. Just trying to help you hold that so it didn't wear you out. Yeah, maybe we can add some struts or something. Yeah. Uh, so we're familiar with 22 RPD. We took my buddy's E36 M3 down there okay. and had it dyno. That was fun. We yeah. have video of it, we just haven't posted it. Yeah, you definitely so. should. <laughs> I'll, I'll be recording, hopefully I'll be getting a lot of footage of the car in the dyno and posting it on Instagram and um, keeping, uh, keeping people up to date with what's going on with the car. And then also just learning from, from them and seeing uh, what they know about these cars and, and what I can learn. So it's gonna be really fun, I think. Yeah. Cool, let's take a look at the interior because it's not, not stock. Um, yeah, so we've got a really nice upgraded carbon fiber steering wheel. Just gives it a nice look, uh, makes it a little easier to hold on to. We have a Focal upgraded sound system. Um, still need to do subs, so there's no sub yet, but car's so loud, I don't know if we even need it. Uh, upgraded amplifier in the back, uh, blau punked um, head unit, really nice head unit because it um, it looks factory, but it has all the modern things that you would you would expect USB and Bluetooth and things like that. Um, so since we have a new ECU, we also have a, a dash display um, on uh, where the typical dash would be. So that's a touchscreen interface. So we can go in there, we can check logs, we can um, adjust the boost, we can change just how it looks. Um, so. Shifter, we have a uh, upgraded uh, short shifter, and the shifter itself is also upgraded, so um, gives it a, a super notchy feel, and really upgrades the the driving experience. Just also elevating that shifter up uh, to be closer to the steering wheel uh, is, is nice as well. And then the seats, uh, they're Recaro Sportster seats, which um, are a nice upgrade from factory. Um, yeah, they, they are really comfortable, but they still hold you in. So, you know, I've done a lot of miles in the one month I've owned it, maybe a thousand miles or something, and um, super comfortable. So I'm really happy with that. And um, yeah, I, I think that's about it for the interior. It's it's so the, the original car had 137,000 miles, and I think for that mileage, uh, it still looks great. There's a couple little things here and there, but that's just part of the project and. Gives me an opportunity to make the car my own, so I'm actually looking forward to some interior upgrades as well. Awesome. Well, cool. Well, thanks for showing off the car, man. This is special. Um, for context, I was at the local Cars and Coffee and saw this, and immediately was like, "Hey, talk to me, because this is a special car." Um, so yeah, really cool to see this in person and to kind of, you know confirm what Tate's saying like it really does feel like a video game like it it's unreal to see it in person um just the proportions and the way it sits like it doesn't feel like something that could exist in reality um but it looks great and I yeah I'm obsessed with LTO I would kill to build an E30 LTO kit um but I need more space for a project car first <laughs> Yeah, awesome, man. Thanks for um, thanks for coming out and checking out the car. Really appreciate it. Yeah.